thank you very much for coming to our Climate Expectations press conference. This is on behalf of Climate Action Network Canada. My name is Claire Demers. Uh, I'm from the Pemina Institute, which is a national sustainable energy think tank. Uh, we're based in Alberta. And we're just going to quickly, over the course of this news conference, cover some of the major issues that we hope to see discussed here on the climate agenda. Um, the majority of the speakers will be speaking in English, but we will have students speaking in French, and we are available to take questions in either language. So, um, I'd like to start by clearing up one of the misconceptions that some of you may have heard uh, from the government of Canada. So, we've recently seen the Prime Minister saying that uh, because the UN has climate talks and, and discusses the issue, there's not much need to cover it here. Now, we would all agree that the UN is the right home for the next global climate deal. You know, that's the place where all countries have a voice. But the G8 and the G20 can provide essential momentum to that process and help to deliver a success at the UN climate talks in Mexico six months from now. And I, I saw that process operating last summer in Italy, uh, where the G8 countries there agreed that two degrees uh, was the limit of global warming <coughs> that they would like to see, uh, that global warming shouldn't exceed two degrees. And then six months later in Copenhagen, we saw a much larger group of countries accepting and working from that same limit. But achieving that kind of progress at these summits requires leadership from the host. And despite a promising announcement on fast start financing from Environment Minister Jim Prentice last week, it appears that Canada is on track to waste the opportunity that these summits offer on climate change. Now that started in January. We had Prime Minister Stephen Harper giving a speech outlining the summit's agendas, uh, where he said there are economic issues and there are other issues, and that the G20 would focus on the economic issues so there would be no place for climate on the G20's agenda here. In May, the Prime Minister reiterated that uh, calling climate and other issues a sideshow to the economic issues that he wanted to discuss here. Now, in our view, making the transition to a clean energy economy is a fundamentally economic issue. The idea that there's some kind of a, you know, a trade-off between environment and economy, that they're in opposition, in our view, is, is totally outdated. These things have to go hand in hand. You know, in recent weeks, we've seen a long list of leaders uh, including the UN Secretary General, EU leadership, President Calderon from Mexico, um, six Nobel Peace Prize laureates, calling on the Government of Canada to show more leadership on climate change. So we're going to be watching very carefully to see whether these summits deliver meaningful commitments that will move the issue forward, or whether they'll produce simply vague rhetoric on the issue of climate change. Now finally, this morning, we're releasing some <coughs> new polling um, from a survey that was done by the Gandalf Group over the past week of over a thousand Canadians looking at this question of climate change at the G8 and G20. And we've got some handouts that summarize the results um, with Hannah at the back. Um, but just to give a couple of the highlights, so we found that 70% of respondents support the government taking action to reduce fossil fuel subsidies. And our estimate for Canada is that tax breaks to the oil and gas sector uh, are in the range of $2 billion a year currently. 65% of respondents oppose the federal government's approach of waiting for the U.S. to act on climate before we take action here. And finally, 78% of respondents believe that the government should use these summits to signal that Canada wants to be a leader in the global effort to tackle climate change. Thank you.